Today I'm going to show you how this little stick is going to solve all your problems if you are still running the stock 1.0 firmware. We are going to do some testing, we are going to actually do a full build plate height print and now with the version 1.4 we can actually see they have added a new pretty cool feature. Putting on the firmware is going to be pretty easy and I'm going to guide you to every step. First of all, you will have to follow the GitHub link that I will post down below where you can find the new update, which is apparently the 1.4 version. Then you will have to put it on this stick, insert it in the USB port. Then you go to set, check for updates, offline updates. Now you get the prompt of local update file detected, update now, confirm and let it run. And there we have it, the update is done. It's going to take a hot minute for it to complete, but once it's done, you are all set. And I can see that there is actually some changes already going on. They have replaced the calibration menu by tool and there is a neat new feature that I'm going to tell you all about it. But before that, you will have to redo every calibration, which means the auto bed leveling and the input shaping, which is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to do some testing to see if everything is now working properly. Of course, the updating function is not going to work because we are now on the latest version. So that will have to be seen if that is going to work in the future. So like we can see right over here, we have tool. When we press the tool, we can see we have platform calibration, we have auto bed leveling and input shaping. This is all the same, but they have enabled another function, which is consumables drying. When we push this button, you will be greeted with a warning that the build plate has to be empty. Then we are going to press the next button. And right now it's going to move the beds to zero it out and see where the hell the bat is living right now. Now it knows where the bat is sitting, you get a new menu. And when we look up close, we can set our filament to start drying. Right over here, we can see that the preset right now is ABS, but when we push it, we can select another filament. Now, funny enough, we can see there is no PLA setting right over here. So they are actually pretty scared for you to put PLA right in here. But to be honest, PLA is not that sensitive to moisture. So we are going to select polycarbonate. Then right over here, we can see that the settings have changed. The heat bed now is at 90 C and the chamber is set at 60 for a drying time of 720 minutes. When we get back to the main menu, there is nothing to change. So you will have to select a preset. And if that preset isn't working, you will have to select another one. We have 70 degrees for the build plate. We have 55 for the heated chamber for about 720 minutes. Now the language is a little bit confusing. We can see right here sign out. This is actually an abort function. And then if you press start, it is going to start. Then we are greeted with the translation suspension, which also means stop or abort. Now we can see that the bed is heating and the chamber is getting hotter. So the only thing left to do is to grab some spools, put them in the build chamber like that, and then let them sit for 720 minutes and your filament should be perfectly dry. While I don't expect any real troubles, it is just heating up the build plate. I have already seen people doing it on a regular heated bed and then they put the carpet box that the filament came in on it to create a heated chamber. Now, right now we have a heated element and we have the heated build plate. So you don't need another box to put on top of it. Now it is still suggesting you to put a box on top of it. I don't think it's really necessary. As soon as you hit 50 degrees C, the moisture is going to evaporate from your filament. So it's really neat to see that with a simple update, they can actually change things like this, that you now have a heated chamber to dry your filaments. We have installed the new firmware. We have redone all the calibration and this is going to be our first print. So this is actually something I'm going to put it down in the link below. Uh, one of the most cursed things I have ever printed. So this is what they call the T800 Roctopus or like I like to call it. <laughs> So we can see that all the feet were actually printed pretty nice. We can see that the quality of the feet is actually amazing. We can also see in the lower region we have regained the stability of the printer and all the details are nicely present. This is an ABS print printed at 260 degrees and at a speed of 300 millimeters a second. Now to be clear, the 300 millimeters a second, it is not going to reach it quite a lot, but where it reaches, it is very obvious. For instance, like here, we can see that it actually reached the speeds and at 300 millimeters a second, we can start to see some instabilities. Now this is nothing new, printing at 300 millimeters a second is absolutely 
super fast coming from a bat slinger that used to print right around 50 millimeters a second. These are going to be the trades that you are going to make if you want faster speeds, you are going to start losing detail. But even so, we can see that the details are still nicely present. We can also see right here on top, we should have probably slowed down the top layers. The top layers were right about 250 millimeters a second. So this first print, super cool. And we can see that we actually have solved all the problems, at least with the printer instability. I have tested the print resume and it seems to be working perfectly fine now. We restarted the printer and we can see that it actually resumed. Power recovery is now actually working. We have also tried to heat the nozzle to 370 degrees and this time we were able to heat it to 370 degrees. The limit is set however to 380. But that's still perfectly fine. This system isn't lying anymore so GD sorry for saying it but you should have fixed it with the first release of the firmware. Then I also had some time to test the slicer, the GD Studio. It sounds a bit like a ripoff from the Bombo Studio. It looks and feels pretty familiar, but uh, I actually have to say that everything worked perfectly fine. I could slice, I could change settings, we could do multi-plates, uh, send it to the printer. It was all not an issue and I actually couldn't find any problems with the GD Studio. And then I also did a full height build plate and it just finished right here behind me. I'm going to show you a time lapse. It's a cute little ghost and just like like this man right over here, we have scaled to over 250% in order to make it to the full build height. Here are the results. So this thing actually printed in about four hours and a half and here it is, it is still pretty hot and like you can see it didn't cool enough to release from the build plate. Still freaking hot. And here we have it, the full build height. We can see some instability right up here, but I could also see uh, observing this little model that this thing was quite flexible while printing. This could explain why this is a little bit misaligned. But overall, we can see that the actual print quality is pretty decent. We have an actual seam right over here, which is nearly invisible. So the slicer is doing a great job of aligning the seams on this print. We can see, however, on 300 millimeters a second that we have some instabilities, but like I said, those are the trade-offs you are going to get. So this is a good news show. We can actually see that the update we have implemented fixed all our teething issues. And now I want to start a little bit of a debate with you because on one side we have the opinion which I have is I am going to test the product as it come out of the box and all the problems that I'm going to find are going to be expressed is what I did in the last video. And then you have the other side which is going to say you should always update your printer and all the issues would have been fixed. And this is where I disagree. I think printers like these that are having a very professional character and they want to sell it to print farms, uh, people that don't have a lot of printer skills but just want to plug and play and just print a bit like the bamboo series and these issues are not acceptable when you receive your printer for instance are you a person that the first thing he does is always an update well if you are then great you can update your printer but not over the air because that feature is totally borked the usb method still works on this printer but those are the things that make this printer feel really really cheap this should not be a problem when you receive this printer just straight out of the box and you can say it's only a first batch issue in my opinion that should never happen even on a first batch issue if gd actually wants a more professional look at the company then these things need to be ironed out before you receive the printer and not with an over-the-air update like this one now of course it is really good that they can do the updates that they can fix the stuff that isn't working but in my opinion the qc needs to be a lot better for this system to compete with the competition like a bamboo because let's be honest the bamboo is right now the king of the hill everybody likes the system it is fully calibrated it's all automatic you have the EMS system that is working perfectly fine. So if you want to compete with that standard, that means that these things cannot happen. Now, that being said, GD is absolutely doing their best on the customer service to help everybody. And this is also something I see on the Facebook groups from people having issues with the printers that GD support is actually pretty good. There is nobody that is just ditched around the sides like we have with other companies. I would say that the GD support is pretty amazing. They are doing their absolute best to provide you with the best product. Also with me, when I had my issues with the review, we went back and forth on all the issues. They have provided 
provided me the update before this review uh, could have been live, but I'm of the opinion that I'm going to start using it first and then updating it later to see what the problems are. And because I ran out of time with the hot end issue, these are the results that you are going to get when it arrives at your home. So the first thing that you want to do, update your machine, you will thank me later. And then I'm going to introduce something new, the comment section. Because for this system, the comment section was crazy out of control. We had on one side people absolutely loving it. Then we have people in the middle, a bit more like me, that are looking at the problems, looking at the quality, looking at the price and making a well-informed decision. And then you have the complete other side, the absolute fanboys, <laughs> just trying to take a massive dump on this printer because it's not a bamboo. And they just absolutely destroyed me. How I am ever going to financially oh, and emotionally recover from it. Oh wait a minute. Yeah, never mind. Seriously, if you're that guy or if you are just mentally like that guy, don't be, don't be such an asshole. Why do you even think I give a fuck about a comment like that? Don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed the conversations that were going on on the comment section, but some of you guys really need a reality check. One of the comments I have seen a lot is going to be noise. I touched a little bit on the first video, but because I was talking a lot, here is another demonstration. This is the sound. And this is the pure sound of the motion system. We have no fans, but even if I enable the fans, the sound is pretty minimal. So like you could see, this was the printer at full whack. The fans were off, but to be honest, the fans are a lot quieter than the motion system of the Plus 4. We don't have annoying vibrations in the printer. So yeah, I would say that the sound this is emitting is pretty much normal. Then a few comments I saw was actually about the looks of the printer. I think mostly the people were very excited about the new looks. I think also the looks of this printer are actually pretty good compared to the previous printers, the X-Max and the Q1 Pro. They looked pretty weird. This is actually looking more like a professional printer. Then some people commented about the jamming issues and actually I have retried the testing about my jamming issue and I have found the problem and the problem was this guy right over here. So the first thing is if you're going to use the filament cutter and I'm going to demonstrate it to you, you press the button, the filament is dis disconnected and you can pull away your box. Well, the first time I did something super stupid. Instead of loading in new filament, I have pushed, I think it's called change filament or something like that. Actual filament that was hot in the nozzle got extracted. The hot filament got in the wheels and it all jam packed up on each other. So the first thing, if you're going to use the filament cutter, only push the load button. I have done it. Here is a little proof of it. It is actually capable to snip off the filament. Put it out, put it back in, load it in, and it is going to push the remaining filament through the nozzle and then it will purge out just like usual. So the only reason you want to use the filament cutter is to save on time because you don't have to heat the hot end. If you want to take a color and swap it to another printer because you are working on another project, then it's going to be very simple. You just push the filament cutter and you can take away your filament. Just remember, only load your filament, do not change it or it will all gum up into your extruder. Then I had a few calibration answers or people just generally being confused that there are still leveling knobs on this platform and those people were very disappointed to see that a printer like this that is trying to compete has leveling knobs. Now in my opinion this is not a big issue, the Q1 Pro also has it, you have to do it once and in this way you can only use two motors to do the tramming this way and then you have the leveling knobs to see if your belt plate is flat in correlation to your nozzle. One time deal and even if your bed is crooked the mesh is going to take over. The only thing you will have to do if you don't do the calibration is that you will have to lower the speed of your first layer so the bed mesh has time to compensate. Then there were also some valid concerns that there was no automated Z offset function. Well, I did a pretty poor job explaining it in the previous video. I didn't actually explain it in the previous video, but the nozzle is probing the bed. There is a force cell in the bed. Then it's going to take its inductive probe. It's going to do the same thing. And then depending on the measurement of the probe and the sensor, it's going to set an automatic Z offset. 
I have to adjust mine by 0.03 to get the perfect squish. So I would say that the automated Z offset is actually pretty good on this machine. And I will insert a little clip on how this system is working. So you can see the probing of the nozzle and you can see the probing of the sensor and then it will set its automated Z offset. So if we want to do a true comparison, we have to take the cheapest that Bamboo has to offer except for the A1. And then you will see that you don't even get paneling, you don't have a chamber heater, you don't even get a color screen and the build volume is smaller. So are you really getting a better experience with the Bamboo at that point? Then, then there was somebody saying, wondering if Strand Assist will suit them as well, lol. Well, if this is going to be very popular, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Now we also had some people that were concerned about my bearing issue and that it is an absolute shame that I received a product with a loose bearing. Well, I actually agree. This is a review sample, but this is just sitting in a warehouse next between the printers that you are going to buy if you live in Europe. Now they kept telling me that I'm the only one that is experiencing this issue. But in my opinion, if that dude or lady that is going to put that glue in the print head and she is having a bad day, the possibility of being more than one is going to be bigger than one. I think they have chosen the wrong method of fastening the bearing to the carriage. We could see on the Creality K1 Speedy that I also reviewed that the actual bearings will cap together with the spang mechanism. So we had a little plate. Behind that plate we had the CAN bus cable and if we remove the complete plate we could see that there were two springs sitting behind it and those springs was actually to hold in the bearing. So the spring mechanism of the K1 Speedy was really interesting to see. I do think that the spring would be the better option. It is still still some kind of a glue, it still can rattle loose. You are dealing with graphites and oils and all of that and I'm not sure how good the oil would uh, hold up against uh, two big springs pushing on it. So it's still going to be seen if I'm the only one with the issue but know that it is actually pretty easy to fix. Now the way I fixed it, like I told already, is going to be by a piece of foam. So this is some packing foam that comes with the printer and just this little piece right here was enough to hold in the bearing. So in my case, I just used this little bit of foam, put it behind the bearing, clamped the whole thing together, and it seems that the issue is pretty much fixed. So if you are having the problem, this is going to be it. You will have to remove the complete carriage. It's a bit of a pain, but it is doable, and you don't have to be afraid. Just loosen some connections on the back. Then there are, I think, about eight bolts you have to remove, and the whole thing falls apart. It's pretty easy. Now to get back that it, it's a shame that I'm getting a sample like this with loose bearings, I absolutely agree. Those are the things, and especially for some, somebody like me who is reviewing the system, that are going to give them a bad name because of sloppiness or, in my opinion, a bad design. So those are the things they actually have to work on. And I think it's really important for people like me who are reviewing printers that we push to keep information honest. And with that I mean, if you are experiencing issues, you really have to tell it. If that means that the brand doesn't want to work with you after that, yeah, that's perfectly fine. But at least you are being honest and warning people about the potential issues that they can face. For instance, with me, the firmware 1.0 was problematic. So I hope that all the printers that are going to produce in batch two are all going to get updated so things like this are not going to happen. And then I had somebody telling me is the plus four and not the X plus four. Well, it is really confusing because if you're going to get to the get up, they are still talking about the X plus four. Even the freaking box has an X on it. And if we look at the old documentation, they were talking about the X plus four. Then there were also a lot of people voicing their opinion about the comparison between Bamboo and Chidi. And I think most of the people agree that uh, Chidi is definitely catching up what Bamboo is doing. They are definitely still simplifying things. Like I said, like I said, the bed, there is no uh, filament calibration and all of that. But if we compare price to price point, there's no denying that this system is the better of the two. Then there were also some comments about the acceleration. And I also have some good news on that regard. I redid all the testing, I redid the input shaper, and I could actually see with fixing the bearing, we went up from 8K to 9.5K. So we have increased our acceleration. 9.5K is still not that big because the Sovol SV08 sitting right there in the print form is delivering about 11K and it is even bigger build volume than the GD Plus 4. Now a lot of that can be explained because of the massive print head which is probably going to be the reason that, that we are seeing slower printing. But like you can see, this print took under 5 hours and this print with all the retractions and movements and all of that 
only took about six hours. So it, this printer is definitely not a slouch. Is it the fastest printer in the world? Absolutely not. But I think if you can print 300 millimeters a second and it is reliable, like you can see, not a bad system, right? Then there were also some comments that uh, actually have to agree on that they are going to avoid the first batch. We could see on the Q1 Pro, the Q1 Pro got a lot of updates after the first batch because there were a lot of things coming up that were not problematic, but let's call it quality of life issues. So that printer definitely got some massive updates. And if you are in the first batch, you are missing out on that. Now I got pretty hard burned on the K1. And uh, yeah, you could see on the Q1, there were issues and probably there will be things that I didn't cover because I didn't experience them that they are going to change on the plus four so it is definitely not bad to wait out the first batch and see what they are going to do or if like for me instance the bearing issue is much bigger than they want to say it is then we also had some people saying that they find the pricing pretty decent or okay or on par or just what they expected i also think that 7.99 is a good pricing if they can actually sell this at 700 bucks yeah then there is no more competition at that point i think that 700 bucks is just a no-brainer for the sprinter so prusa if you're watching your mk4 point whatever the hell it is right now whoo pretty tough sell right now and then i want to end with this it is the actual first time i have seen fanboys fanboys if you don't know what it is those are people that are hooked to a brand and there is nothing else they want to buy except for their brand unfortunately in this case it's going to be bamboo and those people are so blind they can't see if there is something good hitting them in the face there are still plenty of things to like about the bamboo and especially all the automated features the bamboo has but there is also no denying that right now the competition is catching up and if they are going to sit on their asses for the next year then i'm afraid that bamboo is going to be too late to release a new printer in order to compete with this of course bamboo is probably not feeling very inclined to change everything up because you guys are voting with your wallet and it has been pretty clear that voting with your wallet is in favor of bamboo but you have to put off your pink colored glasses because not everything is as perfect as you think. You had the A1 dumpster fire, AMS wasn't that reliable in the beginning, and then you have TPU, you can print TPU if you're not using the AMS, but the AMS sucks if you are trying to use TPU. And then I want to end with the following. Like you can see, Bamboo is not perfect, Bamboo also has quality issues. So does Prusa, so does especially Creality, and look at Frozen, what the hell they are dealing with, with the Frozen R code. They are having an absolute nightmare trying to get that thing even finished to give it to the customers. So while some things that I'm going to say are pretty harsh, I think it is really important that we keep saying it in order for them to improve on it. And no brand is perfect. Not Bamboo, not Chidi, and especially not Creality. Then I want to thank my members, especially these guys right over there for supporting the channel. If you want to become a member too for only one buck a month, you can join the chaos and help me fund some of these projects. If not perfectly fine, maybe subscribe to the channel and give me a big thumbs up. And guys, I'll see you in the next one.